This is the first tutorial in the Learning to Use AutoCAD series, Getting Started. This tutorial will introduce the AutoCAD 2005 user interface. This dark area here is called the graphics or drawing area. Here is where your drawings are created and displayed. Notice that the crosshairs moving on the screen represent the position of the mouse cursor. Down in the lower left hand corner you can see the coordinate system icon. In AutoCAD, it is called the UCS icon, where UCS stands for User Coordinate System. When drawing in two dimensions, the UCS icon is not terribly important. It is used to identify the positive direction of the X and Y axes. When entering coordinates, X values are positive to the right, and Y values are positive upward. As we get into working in three dimensions, the Z axis will become visible. Currently, you can't see the z-axis because it is coming out at us perpendicular to the screen. But the UCS icon will be very important keeping track of where we are in three-dimensional space. Now directly below the drawing graphics area, you see these three lines of text. This is called the command line. Here, we can enter commands from the keyboard and they will appear in the command line. This, the command colon, is called the command prompt. This area is very important to pay attention to as you're issuing different commands, particularly when you're in the middle of issuing a command because there's typically a lot of different options within the different AutoCAD commands, and the prompts change as you input different information. So you need to keep track of what you are being prompted for. For example, if I type in the command line, you can see that AutoCAD is prompting me for the starting point of the line. If I type line again, I get an error because I'm in the middle of a command and it is expecting a point. To cancel a command and return to the command prompt, press escape. Directly below the command line, we see the coordinate display. You'll notice that as we move the mouse into the drawing area, the XY coordinates of the mouse movement are tracked in this display. To the right of the coordinate display, we see the status bar. These are all toggles, in other words, on-off switches that access different drawing aids. We will be discussing some of these in the course of these tutorials. In your setup, you probably have some of these clicked on at the present time. I'm going to start most of these tutorials with all of them off. For example, if I click now, I just engage something called the OSNAP. In the command line, you can see OSNAP is on. I'll click it again and turn it off. The only thing that I will leave on is the Model tab. Now, up at the top, you will see a series of pull-down menus. If I left-click on one, the pull-down menu will open. Wherever you see a right arrow, that indicates that there are further selections. Whenever you see something like this, with the ellipses, this is an indication that you will be opening or accessing a dialog box in AutoCAD. For right now though, I'm just going to left click the mouse button outside the menu. Just below the pull down menus, we have a couple of toolbars. This toolbar is called the standard toolbar. The one below is called the layers toolbar. To the right of that is the properties toolbar. At the left hand side of the drawing area, you should see the draw toolbar, and on the right, the modify toolbar. So, in the default setup, when you first install AutoCAD, you'll have these toolbars open and docked. Docked meaning that they are either at the top, bottom, left, or right hand side of the drawing. I can move the toolbar by left clicking and dragging on these double bars. Here you see a highlight or phantom border of the toolbar. When I release the left mouse button, you can see that we've moved the Modify Toolbar. In fact, you can see the name that identifies it as the Modify Toolbar. We say now that the Modify Toolbar is floating over the drawing area rather than being docked. So if I wanted to, I could dock the Modify Toolbar down at the bottom by clicking and dragging it down towards the bottom of the screen. At a certain point, the shape of the highlight will change. When I release it then, 
the toolbar becomes docked. I will now float the toolbar again, and if I wanted to, I can close this toolbar by clicking on the X. There are a couple of different ways to reopen toolbars. I'll typically use the View pull-down menu. So I'll click on View, and then select Toolbars. Clicking on it brings up the customized dialog box, open to the Toolbars tab. Notice that right now there's a check by all of the toolbars which are currently open. However, Modify does not have a check since we've closed it. To open it, click on the box next to Modify and close the dialog box. Here you see the Modify toolbar once again. At this point, I'm going to move this back and dock it to the right hand side. So this then completes the introductory tutorial. We've looked at the basic components and terminology of the user interface. We've looked at the drawing area, the command line, the coordinate display, and the status bar. We've also looked at the pull-down menus, as well as different toolbars and their different statuses, either docked or floating.